In 2021, archaeologists working in White Sands National Park made an archaeological discovery that would shake First American studies as we know it. These researchers found tracks of human footprints preserved in alkali sediments on a former lake bed. These, based on seeds above and below the footprints, were dated to 22,000 years ago, which is much older than any other archaeological site in North America. Additional research since that time has shown that there are often these linear striations and grooves in association with these footprints. And these researchers determined to find out what these were made by and how they got there. Based on the morphology of these features, how they intersect with the human trackways and ethnographic data, these researchers think that these grooves were left by travois, or early simple human transport technology that were carried and dragged behind these ancient uh, lakeshore dwellers. The sediments that preserve these tracks were formed from a lakeshore from an ancient paleo lake called Lake Otero. These ancient lakeshore sediments have multiple kinds of tracks in them, not just human ones, including mammoths, camelids, bison, uh, canine, and felid, and many more. However, linear tracks and grooves are only associated with the human footprints at White Sands. These ancient sediments from Lake Otero can preserve human trackways in three different ways. However, only negative relief footprints, called hyporelief, can be excavated, consisting of unconsolidated but very dense and compact fill, uh, which is filled with other types of sediment over the top. Since the sediment is so compact, it is almost impossible to excavate with hand tools, meaning that power tools uh, even including a dirt-rated chainsaw were used to excavate these footprints, or at least uncover them so that hand tools could be brought in and uncover these sets of tracks. So these linear features associated with these human tracks occur in three different types. Type 1 consists of long linear grooves extending for several meters in some cases, and these often longitudinally transect the human footprints, kind of running straight down the middle of them. The Type 2 linear trackways are very similar to the Type 1, except that they're much broader and shallower, but they still kind of longitudinally uh, occur across these human footprints. Type 3 linear features are a bit different than the other two, in that there are sets of two linear parallel sets of features, and these, rather than bisecting the footprints down the middle, are located mostly to either side, and they have a fixed distance between them, even when they move side to side a bit in the sediment. In order to explain these linear features, the researchers had to test a few different hypotheses to see what was more likely and rule out like non-human origins. So the first of these is animal trackways. So could animals have left these linear associations that occur with human trackways? Well, the only kinds of animals that could leave linear features would be like mammoths dragging their tusks or beavers dragging branches and logs behind them. However, uh, mammoths moving their tusks around wouldn't leave these really long straight sections uh, that are found in these sediments. And then beavers, they wouldn't be dragging just one uh, very narrow skinny log what, like we find making the indents uh, in these sediments you would instead find some sort of variation with these various uh, trackways. The most telling evidence that animals didn't leave these linear features and that they're humans is that only human footprints have these linear trackways and linear grooves associated with them. And there's no animal tracks in the immediate vicinity. Another hypothesis that they had to rule out was floatsome from the lake, so just sticks and logs bobbing along, causing these linear trackways. And honestly, these linear features are just way too straight and uniform to have been caused by floatsome. And the sediments in which these trackways formed, in which these, you know, human trackways were left and the linear features were left in them, uh, they occur above the waterline, they were formed above the waterline, not in the actual lake sediments themselves. Another possibility they wanted to explore is would these linear grooves be associated with some sort of like keeled watercraft 
uh, boats that have a very like pointed uh, base going you know front to back. Um, and they looked at a bunch of different uh, ethnographic sources of indigenous American boats, and they don't really find a whole lot of keeled vessels in this record, and definitely none in the southwest and in association with the types of uh, lakes environment, uh, lake environments that these tracks are associated with. So they ruled this out as pretty unlikely. Another possibility is... Uh, humans dragging sticks for like firewood or like spear shafts or tent poles behind them and this is definitely a possibility um they can't rule it out entirely but uh just by the nature of how these were carried you know you would have to hold them in one hand you would expect them to be kind of offset one side or another to the human trackways and uh they don't occur in the types of variation that you might see with a uh, human firewood transport and looking at, again, indigenous ethnographic data, they found that um, indigenous people often carried like bundles of firewood on their backs rather than just, you know, simply dragging logs behind them. But, you know, it is possible that some of these linear features were from that. Uh, however, uh, with discussion of historical data and consultation with indigenous peoples from the area who are associated with this research project, these researchers thought that the Travois was the most likely explanation for these linear grooves in association with these footprints. Uh, so a travois is a simple transport vehicle. Uh, ethnographically, they were used by people of the Great Plains and often dragged behind uh, dogs and then later horses, uh, rather than primarily humans. So the idea is that these uh, Type 1 and Type 2 trackways were left by travois consisting of uh, either one stick bearing a load dragged behind the human or more likely two sticks kind of joined in an A-frame situation with the uh, point of the A-frame dragging along in the, the uh, sediment and a uh, load whether it be uh, firewood, cuts of meat, uh, even small children and elderly people kind of sat in the travois. Uh, historically these travois were also used uh, not just to transport uh, things like food and firewood, but also uh, shelters, so like teepee poles and uh, the cloth that was attached to them, which is definitely something that could have happened here at White Sands. So the type 3 linear grooves that occur with these human footprints, uh, these are thought to be a travois design that is uh, an X shape or just like crisscross of two poles, and these would uh, be held in you know two hands and drive behind a person, and the uh, fixed nature of the poles would leave these really evenly spaced grooves like we find in these Lake Otero sediments at White Sands. So if in fact these uh, linear features found with the human footprints are from uh, human activity, uh, this is pretty cool evidence of uh, Trivois use very early in indigenous American history. And honestly just gives us a kind of broader picture of what life was like at White Sands. Because these footprints are kind of all the evidence we have of people there, uh, you know, 22,000 years ago, terminal Pleistocene. Uh, we don't have any sort of uh, traditional archaeological sites kind of found in the vicinity that date to the same time period. You know, things like uh, flakes, stone tools, hearths, that kind of thing. So these uh, linear features that are occurring with footprints that are likely the result of travois use gives us a really unique insight into what life for the first Americans might have looked like in uh, White Sands National Park in the southwest of North America. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to drop a comment or like below, and please subscribe to my channel, Pathways of the Past, in order to stay tuned for future content like this video. Until next time.